The notice of preliminary objection dated 12 June 2023 is partly found to have merit in view of the doctrine of exhaustion. B, the notice of motion application dated 30th May 2023 is found lacking in merit and is dismissed accordingly. C, the parties to move to the appropriate forum for further orders in regard to the petition and the application for joinder by the fourth and fifth respondents. Honorable members, I'm advised that the upshot of the ruling is that in dismissing the application made by the petitioners, the court redirected the petitioner to an appropriate forum for further orders. In effect, the petitioners have been referred back to the dispute resolution mechanisms provided for under the Political Parties Act 2011. The matter therefore remains live within the jurisdiction of the competent authorities even as the speaker is being urged to make a determination on the matter. Those urging the speaker to make a determination in the matter ought to realize that the speaker's guidance only facilitates the transaction of the business of this house. It is not in any way linked to the role bestowed upon other competent authorities by law. Honorable members, from the onset, the process of the replacement of the deputy minority whip has been tied at the hip with a request by a section of the members of the Jubilee Party to be recognized as a parliamentary party. From my communication of 4th May 2023, upon the request for the de-whipping of the deputy minority whip, I received a letter from the member for Nakuru Town, West constituency, Honorable Samuel Arama MP seeking the recognition of the Jubilee Party as a parliamentary party. Honorable members, the letter from the Honorable Arama added to the already existing confusion with regard to the affairs of the Jubilee Party. I had previously received two letters dated 21st September 2022 from the Honorable Jeremiah Kioni on the leadership of the Jubilee Party and its nominee to the Speaker's panel. At the time, Honorable Kanin Keka did also claim to communicate on behalf of the Jubilee Party as the Acting Secretary General. In my then guidance to the House, I noted the need to leave determination of political party disputes to competent authorities outside Parliament as envisaged by the law. On the issue of whether the Jubilee Party is a parliamentary party within the meaning of Standing Order 20A, the House will recall that I did guide the party having 28 members clearly surpassed the threshold of 18 members required by the standing orders. I was, however, hesitant to wade into the recognition of the party on account of the lingering issue of the persons authorized to communicate with the speaker with respect to the Jubilee Party. Unfortunately, honorable members, the confusion relating to the Jubilee Party did not abate. You will recall that in the communication of 8th June 2023, I noted receipt of a further flurry of communication said to be made on behalf of the Jubilee Party. I received further letters dated 4th May 2023, terminating the membership of the Honorable Kanin Kega and the Honorable Sabina Chege MP in the Jubilee Party. Members of the bar, take your seats. Take the nearest seat. Honorable members, additional signed off by a Mr. Nelson Zuya as the national chairperson of the party. In the letter, Mr. Zuya urged that the Speaker refrain from effecting changes to House leadership and committee membership pending the determination of an alleged dispute between the Jubilee Party and the Azmir Coalition. Honorable members, it is against this backdrop and a lack of clarification on the affairs of the Jubilee Party at the time that I again expressed my hesitation to recognize the party as a parliamentary party. Indeed, as members will further recall, I granted the minority party and the Jubilee Party a period of 30 days to allow them to put their affairs in order. Whereas it would seem that the minority party has concluded the matter of replacing its whip, 
The same cannot be said with regard to the affairs of the Jubilee Party and its members in the House. As at today, the question of who constitutes the bona fide leadership of the party, especially in the House, remains unclear. Honorable members, on the 13th of June 2023, barely a week after my last communication on this matter, the Honorable Samuel Arama again wrote to, on behalf of the members of the Jubilee Party, conveying names and signatures of 21 out of 28 members, expressing their support of the recognition of the party as a parliamentary party. In the past week, I have received two conflicting letters on the matter of the debut minority whip from the Jubilee Party. A rambling letter dated 20th October 2023 from the Honorable Jeremiah Kion said to support the replacement of the deputy minority whip is littered with insults and other unpalatable statements and worth of my mention. The message in the letter is lost in its tone which is obviously beneath the standard expected of a person who has sat in this honorable house. On 24th October 2023, I received yet another letter from the Honorable Joshua Kutunyi, who claims to be the party's deputy secretary general. In the letter, the Honorable Kutunyi claims that the, Je the Honorable Jeremiah Kioni was expelled by the party and ought not communicate on its behalf. The letter contests the replacement of the debut minority whip on various grounds and alludes to aggrieved members of the Jubilee Party not having been afforded access to internal dispute resolution mechanisms to address their grievances. It concludes by reiterating the claim for the recognition of the Jubilee Party as a parliamentary party in the National Assembly. Honorable members, while it is not the duty of the Speaker to organize how parties are run, you will agree with me that the state of affairs in the Jubilee Party calls for an intervention, especially for purposes of the smooth conduct of parliamentary business. The myriad letters emanating from outside Parliament do not paint a clear picture as to the current leadership of the party. The pending disputes internally and before the other competent authorities obscure the matter even further. <coughs> Honorable members, the confusion of the Jubilee Party has permeated the walls of this House and affected the transaction of parliamentary business. We now find ourselves in a situation where a small faction of the members of the party seems to be aligned with the minority party, while 21 out of the 28 members of the party have expressed their unwillingness to be associated with the minority party. And this has been done in writing. A definite question arises as to which member's interest the Speaker should prioritize over the other or whether the Speaker should just accept the reality of the existence of these two factions and the parity of their interests. From the myriad of correspondence from the various claimants in the leadership of the Jubilee Party, including the Honorable Kioni, the Honorable Kanin Kega, the Honorable Samuel Arama, the Honorable Joshua Kutuny, and Mr. Nelson Zuya, the cardinal message is the desire by the Jubilee Party to be recognized as a parliamentary party. It is for this reason in the area that I previously directed the minority party as mere coalition and the Jubilee Party to sort out their issues within a period of 30 days. And I, to date, honorable members, the issue highlighted have not been sorted out. Neither have I received any communication from the leadership of the minority party. Honorable members, in the initial letter from the Honorable Arama seeking the recognition of the Jubilee Party as a parliamentary party, the Honorable Member for Nakuru Town West rightly observed that Article 36 of the Constitution on Freedom of Association and Article 38 of the Constitution on Political Rights confer upon each member of the House the right to determine which entities they wish to be associated with and the right to make political choices. It is therefore logically it therefore logically follows that the current uncertainty with regard to the affairs of the Jubilee Party does not abode well for the continuity of the business of the House and the full participation of the members of the party in the House. Honorable Members, Standing Order 20A governs the manner of recognition, of recognizing parliamentary parties and designating party leaders and whips in the National Assembly. From my reading of the Standing Order, it allows a party or a coalition of parties 
that is not the minority or majority party to designate their leader, whip and debut whip upon recognition as a parliamentary party. Whereas the standing order notes that the whips of such party are appointed for purposes of the transaction of the business of the house, it is strikingly silent on the purpose to serve, to be served by having such a leader in the house. At the moment, I'm of the considered view that apart from creating unnecessary confusion, allowing the existence of a leader other than the leader of the majority party, or the leader of the minority party would be an affront to the constitutional underpinning and recognition of the majority party and the minority party. Honorable members, who served in this house before the promulgation of the current constitution, and who are well versed with the parliamentary traditions bear testament to the fact that a party that is not the majority or minority party in a presidential system or which is not in government or the official opposition in a parliamentary system is normally afforded minimal facilitation by the House. At most, such a party is only entitled to a whip. Honorable members, before making my determination on this matter, I'd like to draw the attention of the House to a press statement that was recently issued by the minority leader in company of his deputy on this subject. I shall not reproduce the contents of the statement made by the member for Ogunja issued after the sitting of the House on Thursday last week because of their unpalatable nature. I will only note that it is unfortunate and highly regrettable that the leader of the minority party chose to publicly cast as passions on, val on valid parliamentary processes even after he and his deputy had separately visited my chambers and held a very cordial discussion with me on this pertinent matter. Honorable members, the distinguished members ought to have known that unlike the previous court orders in this matter, which would be validated through the e-filing system, the order for dismissal was manually extracted and served on the speaker by the leader of the minority party. From our own records, there also existed doubt on whether the House was represented by counsel at the time the ruling was delivered. The leader of the minority party may have been unaware that I was only formally briefed on the developments of this matter on Thursday, 19th October 2023, upon verification of status of the status of the matter. It is incumbent upon me, as your speaker, to ensure that any adverse actions I take are valid, justified, and lawful, and in this respect I am enjoined to satisfy myself with regard to the authenticity of any information that I convey to this House. Honorable members, I expect the leadership of the House to conduct themselves with decorum and respect for the high office that they have been entrusted with. In this regard, the conduct and statements attributed to the leader of the minority party, including the wild aspersions cast on the person of the speaker, leave a lot to be desired and are a stain on the privilege and prestige of the institution of parliament. The speaker takes a very dim view of this kind of unproductive and unhelpful conduct. Honorable members, going back to the matter at hand, you will recall that my predecessor, Speaker Kenneth Marende, was faced with a similar situation in April 2009 during the 10th Parliament. At the, at the time, President Kibaki had appointed his Vice President as the leader of government business in this House, which prompted the then Prime Minister to write a letter to the Speaker appointing himself to the same position. This resulted in an impasse that threatened to paralyze parliamentary business. In his ruling, honorable members, Speaker Marende broke the deadlock by adopting an interim measure that resulted in the chair of the House Business Committee being occupied by the Speaker. Additionally, the Speaker tasked the joint government chief whips to run the affairs of the government in the House and threw the ball back to the President and the then Prime Minister to solve the impasse. Honorable members, the speaker will not shy away from the, re the reality that two factions of the Jubilee Party are tearing each other apart and are unfairly dragging the speaker into their wars of supremacy. However, 
to the extent that both factions collectively and separately have a stake in the conduct of parliamentary business, I'm inclined to exercise the powers conferred upon me by Standing Order Number 1 to facilitate the continuity of the business of the House until such a time as the competent authorities make a final determination with regard to the disputes relating to the affairs of the Jubilee Party. In summary, Honorable Members, I guide the House as follows that there currently exists no bar against the decision made by the minority party to replace its deputy whip. Standing Order 20A5 requires the Speaker to convey a decision to replace a whip to the House. In this regard, the Honorable Mark Mwenje MP forthwith replaces Sabina Chege MP as the deputy whip of the minority party that to give effect the provisions of Article 36 of the Constitution on Freedom of Association and Article 38 of the Constitution on Political Rights, which confer upon each member of the House the right to determine which entities they wish to be associated with and right to make political choices, order, 